So, Tom, I know you. We know each other because we were in a sketch comedy group. And I know Patrick because I'm married to him. That's right. And I don't, yeah, I, I met both of you through the sketch comedy group because Pat was like our crewman. I was the crew guy. The, the roadie. Excellent, yeah. The helpie. Well, he was our full stage. We didn't really travel, stage. so <laughs> we didn't really travel. So really, it was a we yeah. just like a help. Remember, we were supposed to at one point. Anyway, that's let's not get yeah, off. Yeah, right. Uh, travel. Do, we'll do one show. Yeah, and we all, we're all still professional sketch comedians <laughs> now. <laughs> so, nope. No. Not true. No. Thriving career. No. Not not so much. Nine to fivers. Well, but, I'm about to be. Yeah, hopefully, I'm. In the job market, so if anyone needs a <laughs> software engineer just getting out of school, call me. <laughs> He's got a luscious beard. Video resume, right? Yeah. Audio. 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 You gotta know your medium when you're podcast podcasting. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the first lesson, man. Right. Mm. So we, we've established how we know each other, and uh, we're here today because of Twin Peaks. That's right. To talk uh, about Twin Peaks, dissect it. We, yeah, we're going to watch all of them, I think is the plan, and then we'll watch the new ones once they come out. That's yes. Great. Yeah, we're at a like huge moment for Twin Peaks because the new season is coming out. Um, so, Twin Peaks origin stories, I probably go... Sorry, I was signaling Pat, like, stop moving stuff on the table or we're going <laughs> to oh, get a lot of audio. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, I, I go way back with Twin Peaks... Started watching it when I was first in the city. Um, I was working as a barista, trying to be an actor, dating another guy who was a barista at a different coffee shop who was trying to be a writer. We huh. watched it on VHS. Um, of course, starting on episode two because the pilot was not on the VHS collection. So that was my first viewing. I've subsequently watched it now almost every year since. Took Pat on a pilgrimage to Snoqualmie, or where it was filmed. Mm -hmm. So, like, huge, huge, massive fan. Yes, and I, who was Pat, <laughs> husband, <laughs> husband, <laughs> husband. Kelly, uh, she had a the first season DVDs of Twin Peaks. So I also started on the second episode and then watched all the way through. Yep. Converted you. End. Yes. Yeah. And then finally the movie. Yes, Fire Walk so, With Me, which we may or may me. not that to believe to have an established yet if that'll be covered in this podcast. But Tom, you have a very different origin story with Twin Peaks. That's right. Um, I was going to watch it with my college girlfriend. We had This was in the disc Netflix era. So we had it on disc for many a day, if not week, until... One, like, Saturday, we made the plan, okay, we're going to watch Twin Peaks, like, season, or at least, you know, usually you didn't even get the full season back then. Right. Got, like, the first five on one disc, then you'd send it back in for the next. Um, I don't know why I'm trying to educate millennials about <laughs> old Netflix. The old Netflix. The old uh, Netflix. You don't know right. how it used to be. It used to be so hard. <laughs> it, was a, it was a lifestyle. <laughs> but also exciting, because you got it in the mail, and it was, like, a big right. thing. I and totally. You you couldn't binge watch like you do no. today. That's something. That's actually a big deal. Right. Like I'm a TV total. I was always a TV junkie, but now I'm like right. a junkie that lives in a crack house. Like right. I'm just. <laughs> I watch so much television. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Every every second I'm not like doing something I need to do <laughs> to make my life move forward. I'm pretty much watching television. It's true. But were we always like this? I I've, I I I tried. When to I was a kid, yeah. I think. I watched, That's the goal. I'm not, I'm as not soon as you get watch home. TV. Right. But it was all bad or video TV. Games, it was, right. Or video games. But it was bad TV, like yeah. fucking MTV, like yeah. Spring Break. It and felt like, good, though. I don't know if it, if it was yeah. bad love, or good, but... Love uh, Line and like, uh, like Chris Hardwick's uh, yeah. uh, Singled Out, singled out oh. show. <laughs> so, at least we're watching good TV now. It's the golden That's age of television. Yes. It is. Which is why a show that is from the 90s fits so perfectly into this golden era. <laughs> and, yeah, like, clearly regarded by many as, like, sort of a precursor, to the, if not, like, the kickoff point of where we're at now with television. Yeah. Cult classic. 
Is it good, bad? Is it bad, bad? Is it genius? Is it horrible? We're going to find out We're together. Find out together. <laughs> I don't know. Because this, yeah, so I should finish my yeah. origin story. Um, so anyway, we, we pop it in the DVD player, and as many people know, have anticipated, there's no pilot episode. There's no one, one, right. episode one. So I immediately, like, you know, was like, oh, well, okay. I, I had heard of this sort of thing happening before. My girlfriend at the time was herself in music licensing and publishing, and it's like, she, we'd had conversations right. about how this happens. But for some reason, even though that we'd had those conversations, she was like, in total disbelief that this was, <laughs> and was just like, well, we can't watch it. I was like, no, let's just, we plan the whole day to watch Twin Peaks. No. We couldn't, so we couldn't That's watch so it. so brutal. Until I wa I started watching it, like, last year with my girlfriend, Melissa, who may not may or may not be on later episodes, as she feels like it, of this podcast. Um, She's much cooler. She would never do that to you. Like, she'd be game for watching No, whenever. of course. And we yeah. did watch, like, the first episode together. I watched to, like, episode five of the first season. I don't... I think she only got to, like, the second episode, if that even... Yeah. That's a pretty typical response. So it's okay. Our goal... One of my goals, personally, not a, necessarily a podcast goal, is, like, I want to get Tom past episode five. Get you to episode I will, six. My goal, I think, is to get him to the killer. <laughs> yes. To yeah, I want to find out who yeah. the killer That's, is. Yeah. The main, I, but ultimately getting him to the end of season yeah. two is the ultimate goal, I think. That shows how cynical I am. But, like, uh, my goals are so small. <laughs> like, they're never, like, big goals. They're always, like, yeah. make it through the Me week. <laughs> yeah, bad. You can you can plan a week? Yeah. Start small. Start yeah. small. That's fine. Because then I'll succeed at the small goal. Small steps. Yeah. yeah. That's not So bad, there's, there's so like, bad. several different ranges of Twin Peaks feelings and interest in the room. So I think that'll be interesting. Um, Pat and I have committed to try and be as spoiler-free as possible. At my insistence, repeatedly yes. and annoyingly, yeah. Thank it, you. But it's fair. It, no, that's good. So it gives us a new opportunity to watch the show and think about like things that I haven't thought about in a long time, like who killed Laura Palmer, because I've known that for a long time. Mm -hmm. You guys should do like a ten minute thing at the end of every podcast after I leave, but it's like <laughs> with all, all the spoilers. Like, okay, so here's where spoiler this... alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Those of you who know where all this is going, like, yeah. let's talk about that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we so could do that. We could we, do that. I think that would be helpful for me. It feels very tense to try and not do spoilers. <laughs> like, I'm very nervous about that. Um, and I, so I, my hope is, like, that, you know, we'll have listeners who some people have, have heard, you know, have watched Twin Peaks before, but maybe some who are new to it and wanting to just get into it for the first time. We can bridge you into the oh, new no. season. Oh, no. My parents. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, mom and dad. Clap. <laughs> Just keep rolling. <laughs> Hi. Oh, hot dog eating hot break. Dog break. Yeah, I was gonna call you later tonight because I'm actually uh, recording a podcast right at this very moment with my friends Kelly and Pat, who you know. Hi. They say hi. <laughs> hi, mom and dad. Okay, I'll call you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta be a reoccurring segment. Tom's mom and dad call. <laughs> could happen. It could oh, happen. I lost my recording. I'm just letting mine just roll in the breeze. Uh, yeah, we should be good. Um, One more for me. Yeah, yeah. So, so new fans, old fans. So we've been skirting around this pilot issue, but just to like unpack it, the pilot was not, for whatever reason, we probably should have researched, but was not released with... Uh, like VHS collections and DVD collections of the series. So a lot of fans started on episode two, which would be pretty insane. <laughs> Today. <laughs> right. Oh, no. Like, the the pilot introduces every major character. Right. <laughs> it sets up the murder. It sets up the town. So it's really hard now to imagine what it would be like to start without the pilot, but that is how many, many people were introduced think about, think to about, Twin Peaks. Think about Breaking Bad starting on episode right. two. Right. You're like, That's how many modern day fans right. are starting. It's, and it's a good pilot. Like it's it a, is. It's a well-shot um, very enjoyable, very fast-paced. 
and you, they get a lot of information out there quickly, but without boring you. Yes. Like, there's always some action. Yeah. I was amazed good point, good point. at how much was visually represented and how little was said in the pilot. Yeah. And yet you met good. every character. You understand everything that you need to know to, like, move forward. Despite some questionable acting and questionable <laughs> hair, you're <laughs> getting... Like everything you need to Which is the time. theme of the show throughout <laughs> yeah. is the questionable acting. Yes. And questionable hair. Yeah. And I, I think so. we should we should get our <laughs> gnawing on the scenery award yes. out of the way for the guy <laughs> who plays nominees. James. James is oh. the one nominee for okay. sure. We're gonna be talking I'm a lot voting. about his acting. I'm already I mean he's my in my head wow. he's already won the award. Wait a second though. Oh, Laura's mom. Laura's mom, okay. Mrs. Palmer. So gnawing on the scenery. For the one, maybe, non-theater person who would ever <laughs> listen to this podcast, and thank you, whoever you are, um, is overacting, just being really, really over the top. And in, in the world of Twin Peaks, subtlety is not a choice that happens frequently. So so we have a, a gnawing on the scenery award, and Tom has nominated James. For what reason, Tom? Well, I, see, the thing for me is it's not overacting. It's just hitting right to that <laughs> weird point in my soul. That, <laughs> that's, like, why I started acting in the first place, what I, which which is also mostly a mistake. And, uh, I, I mean, in terms of I wasn't planning on doing it at all. <laughs> and I, and I, that's why part of the reason I don't anymore. Um, and... Uh, Stumble he just, his face, out. his face is just so expressive. Yeah. And it's just like, he just always has this wonderful pain on his face. Yeah, And he it's does. just, you feel, heck, he's the, he's the visual picture of angst, you know? Yeah. He's just so dumb and struggling <laughs> to... <laughs> he is so dumb. ...understand the situation every... But I every know. scene, he's like, whoa. <laughs> My first James note says, James, quote, she was the one... You suck, James. <laughs> that was the very first. I just, I hate James. To be, I just want to put that out there. I, I, I fucking hate his, James. I loved her. I have some other James. I mean, James has some of the quotes that are just like the worst lines. He did, I noticed he said she put, when he was talking about Laura her last night or something, she put her hands around my neck Yeah. and said, and screamed, I love you. Yeah. And then I could start crying and I could barely keep her on the bike. Like, that visual <laughs> yeah. was really great to me. Like, just imagining her, like, yeah. ah, like so freaking out so hard. She's, like, almost letting herself die on a motorcycle. I got no alibi. I, and then I have another note. James is such a baby. I just really had a lot of hatred for James, but I wasn't very specific about Oh, uh, I, I changed my mind. I'm not sorry. That's my favorite James, when he Oh, that Donna. is a good line. That oh, is. yeah. And she. I missed like, that one. Oh, God, James. His, but I know right where you're talking He about. is. Yeah. He And that is a strong, strong contender. Strong choice. Strong choice. Strong, strong choice on his part as an actor. And it... But you, you brought up change. His, I, Laura's mom. Laura's mom, the only which other person well who could, <laughs> could come close. Yeah. To me, it is those two are the main Her contenders. are... Out of this world. And watching it, so we watched it with subtitles because Tom is deaf. I was a drummer. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I hadn't done before. But I'm not really, really deaf. Cool. I'm cool. I, 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 I could actually hear it fine. I'm yes, just, that was an exact. I'm deafer than right. most normal people. But it was interesting to watch with subtitles because you'd see things like ah, r, oh, with like <laughs> right. Mrs. Palmer reacting to Laura's death. The choice of subtitles. And she yes. did just. It was just. So Screaming, it was like dropping phones, and I—I I mean, you're—you just found out your daughter died, so you should react that big. But somehow, it still yeah. was too big. I mean, that's what you <laughs> want, though. When you—you you, like you said, it's like if now on TV, I'm, I'm always like, I would freak out. I mean, I don't have any kids, at a, but like, I was like, I'm always just like, they should be freaking out a little more yes. if their kid's dead. Well, it was um, so cool about... You can't say that about Laura's mom at all. Right, no. She <laughs> no. adequately freaked out. And even after she had been given some sort of shot to calm her down by the doctor, she was still, <laughs> yeah. like, bigger than everyone else in the room. Right. Her, her comatose was, like, still a nine. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> on the face acting scale. Yeah, so, I mean, she's the only one. And the two of them, I will say, we've, we've committed to spoiler-free, but 
James and Mrs. Palmer would will be cons- consistent contenders in this category mm-hmm. moving forward. I feel like they will consistently maybe even be the top two contenders for absolutely and see like the scenery. Just for the listeners, like I was saying earlier. I'm so anti-spoiler that, like, I even get bothered by that kind of statement in general. Not, like, Ugh. in this, in this, not, I mean, it has to, there has if to be those some. those characters don't get killed off in the next exactly. episode. Exactly. I was saying, I, I don't even go to the IMDb's of shows yeah, I'm watching true. because I don't want to see how many episodes the actors have been in. I'm sure that's yes, a common practice. True. No, that's a good point. But can we, let's just back up and do, like, a brief synopsis of what happens in the show in case, for some reason, you did not good idea. watch the show. Um, So the pilot of Twin Peaks, we established very quickly that there has been a murder in a small community. Laura Palmer, who is the high school, she's the prom queen. She's, you'll find someone who the town is a little bit unnecessarily obsessed obsessed with. with. Um, Town of like 51 thousand people uh, ex- I think it is 51 yeah, thousand it's a very like maybe exactly they it showed feels on like it could be a town of 51 though like that's <laughs> yeah. how small towny they small shoot the town. show so she's been murdered there we don't know who did it yeah. yeah we meet in the first episode all of the major suspects and towns people we meet Laura's parents we meet her best friends we meet her boyfriend the boy she's cheating on her boyfriend <laughs> with we meet the inexplicably FBI agent who gets roped into everything, um, played by Kyle McLaughlin, Agent Cooper. So it's really an episode of, like, setting up. There's been a murder, small town. This isn't usual for this town. As Cooper says, it's a town where a yellow light still means slow down, not stop. <laughs> and the biggest... I mean, not <laughs> speed. Yeah, not speed up. Not speed up. Yes, yeah, yeah. slow down. Good line. Speed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the one big clue we have about the murder so far is that... Um, the, her friend wandered out of a, the tunnel, the railway tunnel where Laura was presumably killed. Right. Afterwards, that morning, after they found the body, and she's like comatose at this point. Yes. Yep. Run Hasn't that. really Run given up Pulaski. any information, yeah. but they they were able to track the train tracks back. We're guessing to right to the murder the murder scene. scene. Yes. And they like found blood and a weapon that right. looks like in the hammer. Yeah. Uh, so we don't know a lot. You could see where if you started with episode two, I mean, you don't have a ton of information, episode one, but it does set up every major character a in a really strong way. And I just want to finish laying out the, the scene of the crime in people's yes. mind's eye if they haven't seen the episode. Yes. You've got the, a little mound that says, there's a note on it that says, what is it? Fire, Fire Walk With Me. Yeah, which I... I you. They told me is the name of the movie that came yes. after this series. Which is the correct. story of the murder, so watch it after the series. Don't watch it first. Yeah. That's the only <laughs> detail I wanted to add. Mm-hmm. Yes, Grizzly's seen the crime, and you meet Mind, every character. Mound of Dirt. With, oh, and also on the Mound of Dirt, there's a necklace of a <laughs> right. heart. Like, if you can imagine from the 90s, from, like, Claire's, those <laughs> necklaces that said, like, best friends forever, and you got, like, oh, yeah. the beef fry the other person got, like, <laughs> est. <laughs> like, and? Right, yeah. That's what it looks like. Um, so, yeah. So let's let's just dive let's in Let's just then. jump in. Where yeah. Can... So many places. I should look at my notes, but they're on my recording phone. Okay, grab your phone. No, no, I'm going to just... You guys start. So I my very first note I captured was, Wow, Josie is the first character that we see. I hate her. So Josie is the very first character you see. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. She is a remarkably beautiful Asian woman putting on a bright red lipstick. Um, and short 80s hair, but like really pulling it off. Short 80s hair. I she think is, a little um, exaggerated most, like everyone says most beautiful, but right. I'm not so <laughs> That's not so sure. Uh, I'm not quite so. Her her annoyingness yeah. has made her less attractive to you. <laughs> it could be. That could be. I mean, she's she's definitely smoking. Let's she put it is. that She is. She gets a special... Her character is if she's not as an actress necessarily in everyone's taste. Right. But she's, she's making it work. Yeah. In that fur coat that she comes out in the beginning. The fur coat. Yeah. And uh, the... What's the woman's name? The Catherine, Catherine Martell. Catherine's wearing like a bathrobe next to her. It's a great tableau, but it's like... And yeah. also a very stylish bathroom. Actually. Yes. And you know what? There are a lot of tableaus in this episode. Every character gets introduced in some very striking visual way. But, yeah, I think it's interesting that Josie's the first one we see. She's involved in what I would call a B-plot. 
<laughs> yeah, subplot, major. <laughs> yeah. A major subplot, but still a, the, a subplot. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say, the, yeah, this is definitely the episode of introductions, obviously. Yeah, Pete's the next um, person we see. Yeah. Let's get a little more meta for one second. Like, how would you guys rank Twin Peaks on top in, like, your top... Oh my God. List of shows. Like where like top fifteen, I'm assuming. Yes. Knowing you both. Top five. Top top five for you, yeah. Pat. Kelly. Yeah, top five. Top three. I mean I would say it's X Files, Twin Peaks, and Star Trek the Next Generation. Oh, wow. Which are all in the same era and feature yeah. very similar actors. Twin Peaks, though, it's hard for me to decide sometimes if I really love it or if I love it nostalgically or ironically. Like, I'm not sure in what way I love it. That's part of the what I want to discover. Okay, so uh, the argument here, I, I do think it's purposely made like a into like a soap opera. Yeah. Style, yeah. so it seems bad, but yet it's supposed to seem bad. Right. Right. But, uh, yeah, you can't subtract the irony from this show right. at all. You can't you can't overstate how intrinsic irony is to this yes. how Lynch filmed this show. It's it's clearly intentional. Yes. You, Agreed. Um you, and irony is really not the perfect word for it, but it's the closest word I can think of. Well, we were talking about there's a soap opera factor here. So like if you go through the actors in the show, it's kind of almost 50-50, the actors who are soap actors, who that's like all they did previous to Twin Peaks was soap acting. And then the actors like Kyle MacLachlan who are like, legit. I don't want to say legit, because soap actors can absolutely be legit, but just not soap actors. And so you almost get the sense that like some of the actors are in on this joke and yeah. some aren't, and it Wait, makes it really good. One who's definitely not in on it, obviously James, but also Norma. <laughs> Is yes. the most stereotypical yes. show by actress, I think. Norma, the beautiful owner of the Double R Diner. She's got lovely, oh, yeah. blonde, flowing... You'll see more of her time. Okay, but... yeah, you barely see her in this episode. Yeah, in this episode, you don't see her too she's much. She's beautiful she's in so that soap. era's way of beauty, perfectly. So soap. So soapy. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Um, I, I wrote a note right at the beginning, so Andy, one of the guys who works in the sheriff's department at the beginning when they're look investigating the crime is crying and to me that sets up that Twin Peaks isn't a place that violence occurs all the time like mm -hmm. the fact that the police officers are crying over this yeah crime. that's a good point so definitely not you know yeah, they really want to keep hammering at home that Twin Peaks isn't a place where this happens and yeah. And oh, she it's a really very is, innocent town. Very yeah. innocent town. And they make it clear that Laura, as we sort of touched on, she's the star of this town. Like I love that shot when they show the high school trophy case, <laughs> oh, and there's just uh, like a headshot of her. And I assume it's the prom queen, right? But it, it must have been junior, or they already had their prom, I guess. Yeah. That year, uh, and yeah, it's like it's prom center her. in the trophy case of the high school, which I've never seen at any school I've been to. Being like this girl's gorgeous. This is a, yeah. this will be a recurring theme of her picture being. In right. Very odd yeah. places throughout okay. the time. And typically, a Cheryl Lee, the actress's headshot. No problem, no problem. Just okay. like her headshot everywhere. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's like... always like perfectly framed. <laughs> right. Like, why? That doesn't make any sense because, like, you have a trophy. And even as a theater kid who's like, oh, I wish I had things in the trophy case, I can recognize that, like, my shit doesn't belong in the trophy <laughs> case. Those are for no. trophies yeah. for athletic awards. <laughs> if there's one <laughs> thing we can all agree that. Earned that spot in the trophy case. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's the trophies. <laughs> right. And so the fact that it's just still a glamorous picture of her is extremely odd. It made me laugh. Yeah. That sets it up well. And then also uh, going off of Andy as well here, his hair yes. is amazing. Every the mullets. Everyone's hair. Harry S. Truman has a nice mullet. Who is the sheriff, Harry S. Truman. Yeah. Fucking dreamboat. Andy, He's... the deputy, has a beautiful mullet. Was, the, was President Truman's name, middle name, S? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was Harry okay, S. So they, they named him it's perfectly what after. Says. Perfectly Should after. Should be easy to remember. The first atomic president. Yeah. Yes. The... And hopefully the last. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Harry. Lots of oh. hair. I would say, visually, I could, sit, I could classify this hair, sweaters, what? And leather you pointed jackets. at me just then. So oh. uh, <laughs> leather what other jackets. good hair? Well, let's 
stick a, stick to the hair theme here a little bit, like uh, Audrey's hair Audrey's is not hair, quite right yet. Not quite right yet. There's a change. Which one's Audrey? Sorry. She's the sexy one. So Audrey has the, she's Ben Horn's daughter. Okay. She scares away ben. the Norwegians. Scares away the Norwegians. Very famous shot in Twin Peaks Legacy is Audrey with her saddle shoes changing into her red heels. So she... You know, goes to school, which another great setup of a character is just like the visual of Audrey's getting into a limo to go to school, and you see her little Mary Janes, and then yeah. she's at her locker smoking a cigarette and changing into these like red shoes, which is just another like, oh, things aren't what they seem, people are not who they appear to be, you know, Audrey's not this innocent little princess, she's a little vixen, so her hair though is very strange in the pilot, <laughs> they get it right later. In the pilot there. A few months to grow it out. They perm Leo's hair in the pilot. Leo's hair is ridiculous. There's like a little tiny he looks like perm. Yeah, he kind of looks like a Millie Vanilli member. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Totally. Millie Vanilli. They had a white DJ, it would be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even even uh, like some of the like grunge rock bands had that style of hair too. No, totally. I think Allison Chains also had that like Yeah, right. kind of Lane Staley had that for yeah, a while for yeah. sure. And it's like receding hairline too, which yeah. makes it just even better. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like the perfect example if someone hadn't seen it yet. Like no even Vanilli really is good though. That's a, that's a good yeah. Well it's weird to me that somebody's yeah. job they were like Oh, let's change Leo's hair. Let's get rid of the perm and do straight. Like he looks like the bad guy in Greece. Yeah. The, the mean blonde <laughs> yeah. car guy. Yes, yeah, that's the hair. That's the hairstyle. Yeah. With a ponytail. Still in a pony. Yes. There's some ponytails he here. There's pony. Joey the biker has got a ponytail. Uh, yeah. It's it's pretty almost much hard because there's so either. many characters and so many so much hair and so many shoulder pads and so many sweaters. How do you how do you sort them all out? Is there nothing? Yeah, I was struck by the letter jackets. It's like the <laughs> nicest looking letter jacket I've ever seen in my life. It's oh my got, god. Pretty cool leather, leather it's, jackets. Yeah, leather, yeah. It's got like an extra leather. band of leather, brown leather yeah. on the sleeve <laughs> right. outside of the white leather, which is the leather. It's just beautiful. But uh -huh. yeah, Bobby's letter jacket is amazing. I mean, it's just got the T in the back. But oh, it's like you know a what? Leather biker jacket. Yeah. His leather letter jacket. Yeah, leather letter. Bobby <laughs> would not necessarily this episode, but I have a feeling in subsequent episodes he's going to be a nominee for our chewing on the scenery. Okay. Where, like he Looking gets close to it. there. Looking you can forward. see with that hair he's working and his eyebrows, <laughs> and like what's the line he said? He's like, if I if I skipped rope with her, if I sang songs with her, what does it matter? I didn't kill her. Like, he's <laughs> yeah. just saying things when like that all the time. they arrest him for questioning, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, um, it does matter. You're the boyfriend of the girl who got killed. 101 detective work, you're gonna be the first suspect. <laughs> Kelly, do you do any celebrity impressions? Not really, no. Okay, that's too bad. <laughs> Because <laughs> that was a pretty sorry, uh, <laughs> pretty sorry, Bobby. Bobby, yeah, yeah, I know. See, this it had like a little bit of don't. English in there, I think. <laughs> if I jump rope with her, <laughs> if I, if I sing, he probably doesn't say that. Rope. I think he says if I sang songs with her, but if yeah, I jump rope with her. I wanna, yeah, yeah. That, he might say that. Let's hear your best, uh, <laughs> no. Chelsea. No, Hillary Clinton. Come on, no, I try. cannot. I All can't. Right. I can't uh, yeah, that's a really it. mean thing to do somebody. Yeah, no. <laughs> do it this impression that you probably dance, can't Dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, more setups. There was a really cool shot of, speaking of Bobby, Major Briggs, Bobby's father. His first who, introduction. Yes. Yeah. So X-Files fans, Major Briggs is like a tie between X-Files world and Twin Peaks. but Like it's the same character? Some <laughs> say. Okay. Some it's one of those say, extended yeah, universe some theories. Say, yeah. But Major Briggs and his wife are just in their kitchen. It's a totally red kitchen. He's like sitting in a chair and she's clipping his hair and they're just like facing the camera stoically. It's the first shot of them. And I was like, that's just incredible. Perfect Major Briggs. Like, and there, there's a lot of those where people are just. In yeah. this kind of tableau, the first time you see Benjamin Horn, Audrey's dad, he's in front of a fireplace. The next time you see him, he's in front of a fireplace. Yeah, like, every about, time yeah. he's in these little, like, poses. Lynch loves those, like, posing everything out, making it weird. <laughs> How about the, um, 
the girl screaming through the schoolyard when oh yeah right before shot. they Good. right before they announce, but it's just like, and that girl like we never, never see her, again. her no. or anything like she just. It's a great tone that they <laughs> set with, we know Laura's killed right away, but then they reveal to the parents, then yeah. they reveal to Donna, and then they do the high school. Like How everyone reacts. Yeah, it's a cool... What do they call cool. that? Dramatic irony. Oh! That's, that's like what I mostly learned from my undergrad. Did you? Um, that's why I went back to school. <laughs> oh, wow. Well worth it. Yeah. Well worth it. Totally. Yeah. Like, I like... Um, I mean, as, as cre like you were, when you were watching it, Tom, you were like, how does Mrs. Palmer already know that Laura is dead? Cause she does react to yeah, that. Yeah. As soon as she gets, she's because... on the phone with her husband and her, her husband's like, she knows her daughter's missing for a couple hours now and she's called around and can't find the daughter. But then she's on the phone with her husband saying, basically, I can't find her daughter, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's when the sheriff walks up to the husband at his business meeting and he's like, and Sheriff, what's his face? And she, right. And she's she she like, oh. and it's mostly just her overacting. It, her, she's making playing yes. her reaction, which is probably supposed to be a little ambiguous. Like she's right. Not, she's playing it like she already knows that she was dead, and like, yeah, putting a meat grinder for how her face <laughs> right. looks. Yeah, and and I actually think it's a strong and smart Lynch choice that the rest of her reaction we just get out of the phone that. Um, Leland Palmer is like dropped the phone and he's holding, so you just kind of hear Sarah Palmer screaming oh, in the background. So and I'm like, I phone, can imagine yeah. Lynch being like, Can we just like tone it down on Sarah? How do we do that? We'll just have her like coming out, of a, coming out of a phone. Like yeah. it kind of works really yeah, well. Yeah. Like, because Leland's reaction's okay. Like, Leland does pretty good in the in his react, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, a big he does. Leland fan. He I mean, yeah, I barely even remember his performance in that scene because you, she's, even over the phone. She's, like, still louder. <laughs> it's still, like, freaking. she's owning that scene 100%. Yeah. He's trying to be calm and, like, yeah. rational. And... Yeah, he's, like, definitely, like, the stoic male yeah. in yeah. the show. But then he does have my favorite, I have to see what was done to my little girl. Oh, God, yeah. So weird. Which, oh, yeah. A weird thing to say. Speaking of stoic male as the father, the like, the Cooper, Agent Cooper is so, like, he has none of the characteristic FBI agent stoicness we've come to expect from every other series of an FBI agent, uh, which I just find is like the best decision. Yes. That, what's his face? Hugh, Hugh. Oh, Kyle McLaughlin. Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah, so refreshing. He, it, you're totally right because he has this like gleefulness. Like he really enjoys his job and he enjoys these people and he, it. It's totally different from the trope of like the detective that's cynical and coming in. Like he's got right. like this like joyousness about him. <laughs> to quote uh, Jackie Brown, he's uh, just enjoying being a cop. He's a young yes. guy enjoying being a cop. <laughs> he is, yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I was surprised, like seventh viewing of Twin Peaks, that Cooper doesn't come in at all until like forty minutes into the episode, which is pretty Over, crazy. Uh, yeah. Because he is absolutely the main character, it's and like it's funny. all about Cooper, and, you know... And he comes in exactly... You paused it, and it was... Yeah. Thir, it was I feel like it was exactly 30, 36, 36, right? 36 minutes. Like 36.00 yeah. zero zero minutes yeah. is when I first see him. And I will just make point out possible numerology I, that Lynch was <laughs> trying to put in there this one time. So there's that, like, two times three is six, obviously. And then the donut scene, there's oh, 22... Yes. I counted them. There's 22 donuts all stacked on top of each other, except for the one... Wait. Yeah, that's if you don't count the one that he's eating, I think. Or anyway. Right. And it's a very so, lynchy twin shot. Twin two, that's maybe... Yeah. Two-story donut yes. towers. Two-story donut towers, yes. <laughs> yeah. 20, 36 11 of them about. <laughs> Cooper makes his... And it says something to me that Lynch cares more about setting up the town than setting up the main character. Because, like... To me, whenever I read a book or any any story, I'm pulled in by the first point of view that you get. Like, And so the first point of view that you get with Twin Peaks is just the town itself. You don't mm -hmm. get the main character's point of view until 36 minutes in. So it's like the town so is the main character. There's so and many that they go... Yeah, like, I didn't assume that Cooper... And even, like, the episodes I've seen, I feel like... I don't really feel of Cooper... I feel like it's more a ensemble cast. Yeah. Yeah, than, like it's that's Cooper's fair. show. 
Right. Maybe that changes after the part I've watched, but it doesn't. I wouldn't. To me, like I would never think, oh, Cooper's the main character. Yeah. Well, I would well, say I the town is the main point. character. The town is the main character. It is an ensemble is, show, yeah. and like. Cooper, if you had to pick, he's kind of the Alice in Wonderland who's coming into this yeah. new environment, but not necessarily. He's probably going on the hero's journey. But yeah. We don't. You wouldn't guess that from the first episode, right? Yeah, no. One good thing they do, I think, too, is that every character is pretty unique. Like, yes. If there's not too much confusion, I remember the first time I watched it, I did confuse Leland and Ben Horn a yes. little bit. Yeah. Okay, now see, I'm bad with names. Those, so that's the only problem. Leland I have. is Laura's father. And he's ben an attorney. Ben is the owner of the Great Northern uh, Hotel. Oh, yeah, I thought those were the same. Right. Guy. Yeah. Exactly. So, that's, the, that's the only two characters going who I got to. Confused, uh, but, uh, th- and that but is. But she's good. on the phone with the guy at the. Leland is the lawyer of. So, ben yeah, let's, uh, let's unpack this one because okay. that is a classic confusion. So the first scene that we see Ben and Leland, they're at the Great Northern Hotel. Ben is standing in front of a fireplace, and he's talking to his attorney, Leland, about their plan for the Norwegians. And Ben is the father, though? Ben is... No, Leland's the father. Leland's the father. Okay, that's that's what I thought. Ben is Audrey's father. She's Ben's, the other one. Ben's the se- uh, Audrey's She's the, the sexy sex one. With okay, the, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So they're brokering this deal with the Norwegians to um, to get this that's Ghostwood Estates. It's gonna like basically they're gonna like knock down the forests and put this country club together. And Golf so Ben course. and Leland are like scheming. The very first thing we see of the two of them is like they're kind of ambiguously moral characters in big suits with large shoulder pads and, like, yeah. big hair. <laughs> and they're sort they of personify similar. modern capitalism in this yes. little logging town. <laughs> Benjamin yeah. Warren played by um, Richard Femer, who played Tony in West Side Story in the movie. Um, so, crazy. And then Riff from West Side Story is also in it, Dr. <laughs> Jacoby. But the two of them are, like, being schemers together, and then they go into the meeting with the Norwegians, and that's when Leland, like, loudly interrupts the whole yeah. meeting to, like, leave and take the call. <laughs> he, like, takes the stage, and he's like, excuse me, I have to go now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Thank you, it's like, Leland. Okay, we Thank okay. you. So I would actually put, I have my little list of suspects, since I'm sure that's something we're going to be doing. Ben Horn, to me, is a pretty clear suspect. Okay, all right. Uh, Okay, I just hope you're a really good... I know you're a good actress, so hopefully you can, like, talk about different suspects and not I'm subliminally talking, I'm not, give away. I'm, I'm taking from just what I saw in this episode. I know. I know Based you're Based on just what I saw in this episode, Ben Horns, Bobby, James. Yeah, uh, I put... Dr. Jacoby. If I can guess who the suspect is, I'm going to be so mad at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Based yeah, on something I, that you I said. have Ben, Jacoby, Bobby, James, Mike from this yeah. episode are my suspects. Big Ed. No, I don't yeah. think <laughs> See... Suspect. That's why you can't do it. Because now I know it's not Big Ed. Well, nobody... <laughs> no, I'm just could kidding. Be, but based on just this episode... So they do keep bringing up the letter J is a, yeah. is a thing. Which I don't really remember how they... Oh, because in Laura's diary it says nervous about meeting J tonight. Right. Mm-hmm. So... Which he, uh, Cooper, just... The one cop is like, we haven't found the key yet to the diary. And he's like, he just breaks open and looks <laughs> yeah. at him like, why didn't you just break it open? Right. It's a it's shitty a diary. diary. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a crime investigation. And the cop is like, oh, yeah. Right, really <laughs> They're like, well, we didn't find the key. <laughs> like, that's a perfect how Cooper's world is different from, yeah. like, the Twin Peaks Sheriff Department. They're like, well, we don't have a key. That's, so. that's like a good, that's like laying the character of the town on mm-hmm. extra thick right mm-hmm. there. <laughs> yeah, so Jay is important, which we know James... From our aforementioned award for chewing the scenery, yeah. he is Laura's mi- master, mistress. Wait. What would you say? Like oh, James's... secret boyfriend. Secret boyfriend. Secret boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> yes. Secret boyfriend. Duh. Secret boyfriend. <laughs> there you go. Mister, I think would. Mister. Uh, yeah, because she's supposed to be with Bobby. Mistress. It, yeah, I mean, I if, you wanna, if you want to, you want to get technical. <laughs> I think you're right. It's her mister. <laughs> yeah, master. I think you it's would. It's her master, master James. That should. Oh, it is master. That should be a, a phrase. In I don't English. know. Actually. It's not. I mean, yeah, it's got to be master. <laughs> and then the other J <laughs> is a uh, Jacoby, the therapist. Doctor Nathan Jacoby. That's his first name, right? Nathan. Oh, I don't know if it is. Because I think I was like when he says his full name when he's introduced, and it's like that's the most beautiful name I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah, I think you might. Doctor Nathan Jacoby. 
And it's like he's yeah, he's got like the biggest earplugs in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Blue uh, shoes. Which are the kind I used to wear on stage as a drummer to stop my hear hearing oh, loss. He's a big And I look really cool, yeah. I'm sure. Jacoby <laughs> is a big hippie, by the way, in case you didn't pick yeah. up on that. He's got that big tie. Um, oh good, I'm glad he's like explored more. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jacoby's and I love Jacoby's reaction. He starts he sees Agent Cooper and the Sheriff Truman, and he's like, also, don't tell Laura's parents, but she was seeing me as a patient. And he's, like, yeah. laughing. It's the weirdest yeah. reaction to this murder. And I would never have caught that he was a psychiatrist. Like, well, except, yeah, when she says, when he says his her parents didn't know that she was seeing right. me. That's something a therapist would say. Right. But he comes out dressed in like a mortician, like like a <laughs> He's wearing a lab like a morgue right? director. Yeah, he's wearing yeah. like like he looks like about to do an autopsy in a <laughs> yeah. lab show. Yeah. He's wearing a full lab coat and uh, glasses and just doesn't scream therapist. No, he does not. He's so I think he's a suspect. He's a J name. He's very eccentric. That might be the last time you see him in a lab coat, so Right. Mm. He favors the Hawaiian prince. Yeah. Later yeah. On. Mm, okay. Yeah, he's also yes. got great hair. Not like true. another man another perm. Beautiful fro. Name beautiful one fro. bad haircut. No, I mean in true. terms of no. not memorable. They're all very, very memorable. They are. <laughs> there's no one who's just like, you know what, let's just do like a simple <clears throat> pulled back like, there's no look in Twin yeah. Peaks that's like, let's make this subtle and understated. <laughs> no one rolled out of bed that day, except for maybe James, but he put a lot of work in with the dying. Oh, my and God. The, How does it, it just stand hair. straight up? Yeah, it's like yeah. Mark Simpson. It's not gelled. No, it's no. I, that's how my hair. That's what my hair does. If it's like that length, I would look oh, just like James's goodness. hair. You could probably you have that. Cooper's hair if you put a lot of yeah. Gel I feel, in it it, and mine's a little, mine's too wavy to really pull off that full sleek. Yeah, straighten yeah. it. I guess so. You yeah, use Kelly's straightener. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a I whole straightened process. my hair one time in college and I looked kind of like I was in a hair metal band. Because <laughs> it, it brings a lot of length because it's yeah, like straightening. Yeah, I was so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I should say I let a girl straighten my hair like as a joke and I was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't but go out and rent a flat iron or anything. Okay, Tom. All right. They should, that should be a business where you can rent flat. <laughs> That's like something a lot of people need one time in their life, and then they're like, no. Nah. Yeah. That's I, I, this sounds crazy, yeah. but my my dad would iron my hair Whoa. when I was in high school. I would flip my hair onto the kitchen table, and he would, like, iron it straight. That's a, a little heartwarming insane. scene. <laughs> I know. It's extreme. No, I feel like it. Seems um, sweet. This was a divorced father. <laughs> That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> So he was being Mr. Mom. Yeah, he was being yeah. Mr. Mom, yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of Cooper's hair, when Cooper arrives on the scene, one thing that I love is, like, Cooper looks so different from everyone else that we've seen, and he acts so different from everyone else. Like, so everyone else has and, the big hair and the plaid yeah. and the, like, wool and many layers, and they're very folksy. And Cooper's, like, all in black, slicked black hair. Yeah. Think X Files. Yes, like black piercing eyes. He's not cynical, but he's just like worldly in a way that nobody else in Twin Peaks is. And I love immediately. This is gonna be a big theme for me, but the bromance between Sheriff Truman and Cooper is like to me immediately apparent. Pretty. pretty they love each other. I didn't pick up on that really. Oh I mean, my god, they I, love I each other. I see what you mean now in retrospect, but yeah. I, I wasn't thinking about that. Like the when he meets. He meets Sheriff Truman and he's like, those trees that you have, what mm -hmm. are they? Like, he's immediately trying to appeal to something that he cares about. What kind oh, of see, trees do you have? To me, that's, that's like Coretta's most genuine. He's just like, yeah. so that's just who he is. He's like, man, those tr I gotta talk about these trees right. you got, dude, because, wow. And he is. But he really Genuine's does love the it. perfect word. Yeah. Like, Cooper is very authentic. He lives in the moment. He's experiencing everything very fully. But then he has... It's like the juxtaposition of like he has to deal with these very grisly, gruesome things, and he does so in a very direct manner. Like I was noticing with the pilot that knowing where Cooper goes without any spoilers, of course, but like in the pilot he does have a, a remarkable amount of professional distance from the citizens of Twin Peaks and like the situation as a whole mm -hmm. that subsequently starts to peel off. Yeah, and like it's yeah. neat to see that that he is very, like, distant from. And he's still very professional. And, oh, yeah, yeah. See what you're saying? You know? at this point. Yeah. 
<laughs> he loves it and he's into it, but he's not like drinking the Kool Aid totally. But you can see that he's. It's sort of a, I'm trying to draw an analog from some other film, but he's just fall, like he's falling in love with Twin Peaks. Like, yeah. You see already like. You wouldn't right. be surprised if that character said, like, I'm going to buy a house out here when I retire. Right. Like, yeah. He's, he like, into the furs. And he's the... falling in love with Twin Peaks. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But he's still, like, with, yeah. with Sheriff Truman, when they're talking about Laura, and Sheriff's like, you don't know this girl. And Cooper's like, you'd be surprised. Actually, you know? no. Actually, yeah. Like, Cooper's like, don't actually, know you don't know her. Yeah. 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 So yeah, like, Cooper still ooh. is bringing his you know, kind of worldly... Like, and he turns out to be right. I know that much. Yeah, because yeah. they find the coke. Yeah, right. In her diary. In her diary. And, and always keep Truman's coke in your like, diary. Yeah, Truman's <laughs> like well, it's, it's it has key. a it has, it has a, lock. a key that well. everyone respects greatly in Twin Peaks. Like they're like, wait a second, guys. There's a Maybe, key on this diary. Hey, do you think your dad knew that she he kept uh, she kept her coke in there, and that's why he's like, do you have to take the diary? Because uh, oh, maybe that's oh. our stash. It's not just my daughter's. Good call, Leland. <laughs> actually does respond like when they're like we're going to take the diary he's like do you have to take that he does and he's like holding her little uh I her was mostly bedroom joking, is so but... dollhousey too her, like uh, stuffed animal or something yeah like her pillow or something her bedroom is just very like little girl mm -hmm. creepy yeah Lots of, like, little girl bedrooms, too. Donna's bedroom. Having had, like, my mom <laughs> grew up in a small town, much like Twin Peaks, and, like, my cousin, and I feel like that's sort of a country bedroom thing. Yeah? Like, that's just sort of how they, the girls keep their bedrooms at that time. Yeah. Well, it's more like in the, you know, 70s rather than, like, early 90s, but, like, I think it's just, to me, this whole show has a very, like, 80s, like, early right. 80s feel, even though it's sort of helped define the 90s. Yeah. They're it, behind, because it's kind of like the Napoleon Dynamite thing, where it's like yeah. a small town where they're a little bit behind a couple eras. It There's is. definitely 50s fashion going on in there, too. Right. That's Audrey. And of course, I don't really remember <laughs> the early 80s. <laughs> so I guess when I say, I just mean like, I really mean the late 80s. Which yeah. Well, look at, uh, look at Stranger Things, I think. Uh... That has a very That's Twin Peaks feel. That's kind of similar in terms of... Uh... Great show. We could Great do a show. podcast on that if it had small small town as well though, and, and like, also yeah. lots of big hair, lots of sweaters. And when you <laughs> you were talking about the the bedroom, I thought of that girl. Oh, the girl's bedroom. The girlfriend's bedroom is like What's it's like name? pink and yeah. So that was yeah. Uh, it's true though. Similar. Laura's bedroom, Donna's bedroom, they're both like very like they like, keep like, up the little house. the good little girl room. Yeah. Like, that's how my mom's bedroom Image. looked when I went and visited it as a child, and, like, how my cousin's bedroom looked when I Ugh. saw it as a child, like... So weird. At least in my memory, but... I mean, not that I think they should be having, like... Actually, my mom know, didn't... Uh, uh, anyway. Metal band posters or whatever, but it's, just, it's like they're overcompensating to look innocent. Well, yeah, there's... It, the show almost... It's... There's feel like... It feels like there's anachronisms going on, but they're... Yeah. It's just culturally, it's a, it's a weird mishmash. Yes! And probably intentional to yes. make you feel a little uneasy. Yes, I think that's David Lynch's thing. You see, and even that like Louis C.K. episode that you were talking about that he did, mm -hmm. he loves to do things that just like put you on edge for no reason. And I think the like kind of Little House on the Prairie innocence thing that Twin Peaks has going, combined with like the leather biker weird thing, yeah, makes it feel a little a little weird. You just always feel like it's an it's a feeling of weirdness going on. I, mean, I think there's a commentary on that about like rural towns and how they are just a little bit behind culturally. Yes. Yeah. Especially back then when like you, cable was like barely even invented at that point if it had mm -hmm. been. Mm -hmm. um, was cable, when did the show come out exactly? 90 I want to say? 90s. 90, so. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think ca nice cable was like girl. barely a thing then. Like some, mm -hmm. at least, well my family didn't get cable until very late but um, I feel like when I was seven, like maybe a couple of people I knew had cable. Yeah. 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 Man. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, they set. You caught up slower culturally. Is my yes. Point. Yeah. And no they, internet, obviously. And I think that's the message they are consistently hitting home in the pilot visually with, with the introduction we of the characters. We move a little slower in this town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like things are yeah. a little different here. We're a little <laughs> bit more small town. And I was amazed. I was st starting to keep tabs of like how many characters you meet. You really do meet every major character in this, and it's a large cast. Um, there's been a lot of like commentary with the new Twin Peaks season coming out. The cast is like 200 people or something uh, crazy. Yeah. 
And it's kind of Lynch, I think, trying to throw us off the scent. Of, like, he's always trying to, like, misdirect. But okay, there's so sure. many people. And that's why it's so hard to come up with, like, a few suspects. Because there's, like, so many characters you were introduced to. Right now, our suspect list could be, like, very, very long. Could be a lot of people. And one character who I'm actually glad you spoiled for me isn't coming is Diane, his secretary, yes. I assumed. Yeah. Although you had an interesting, like, who knows who she could be. Right, on that it. is. Yeah. Which is true, like it could be like a girlfriend or like a wife. Could be anyone. Uh, could be anyone. Yeah. But I read like office secretary most likely. I think that's the most Because this was read. back when like you'd have a like a secretary transcribe right. your recording. Like, take a letter, Maria. Yeah. Like that song. Yeah. Clearly. And he's giving her like to her? Well and you know that you know that's the case because he's like and it, that's just a letter J, not the name. Right. But when she's typing it out. Like it's like you're taking dictation. Right. But then yeah. So Diana's Diana is mm -hmm. Cooper is dictating his notes too. Yeah. I remember every time I've seen this pilot, like I always am waiting a little bit in the back of my mind to hopefully hear him even reference Diane again. I know that he doesn't now, so that's good right. to know. Oh Let's he forget about her. Diane is huge. Let's and say Diane again, oh, oh, he does? Yeah. Okay, that's what the, impre the impression mm -hmm. I got from you. Okay. Yeah, well, Diane is she'll say her consistently... Name. He'll say her name all the time. But yeah, we never meet Diane. No, we don't ever meet Diane, which I guess is a spoiler. But to me, it's an interesting one because that's a very Lynch choice. Mm -hmm. That we're just going to have this character that probably in Lynch's mind is very fully fleshed out. That <laughs> yeah. we just never meet. We have no mm -hmm. idea who she is. That is clearly a big... She's a vessel of exposition. <laughs> Let's talk for one minute about Lynch's other works. Just yes. So maybe not everyone knows right. We're referencing the man. Lynch like he's our old buddy hanging out in I, the living sure, room. I am sure. most familiar with the film and the soundtrack of Lost Highway. Actually, one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Right. Because growing up in the 90s, you know, you had the Nine soundtrack. Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, Nine Inch Nails yeah. recorded. Perfect Drug. Perfect Drug, fantastic yeah. single off of it. And I actually read in Marilyn Manson's biography that... Um, he was approached by Lynch separately and was like, I want you and Trent to work on this together. Oh. But then, like, Trent just, like, sort of froze him out. And, Ugh. like, he even saw, like, Lynch with Trent at one point. And Lynch was like, when are you coming to work? To Manson. And he... And oh, my was. God. So, interesting stuff. Are style. you upset that Manson was not part of the Lost soundtrack? I, Lost I, Highway soundtrack? I am a little. I think Manson... Been, <laughs> well, I he think didn't Manson have that one song. Good. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I just recently found out from the Nerdist podcast that... Um, David Lynch was a con was considered to direct Return of the Jedi. He why was not? one of the two directors who was. I mean, like that's <laughs> like. Who knows? I can't imagine that working, but I mean, why not? that's insane to me. He to me, David Lynch has the a very like similar to like a Baz Luhrmann, a very distinctive mm -hmm. within three minutes you know it's David Lynch type of style. He has a heavy brush as an yes, artist. It's like impressionistic. Does. You're you know you're watching a show and you know that they want you to know you're watching yes. a show. Yes. Mm -hmm. And like is it Mulholland Drive where I always talk about the creepy factor? Mulholland it's yeah. creepy. He it's builds this creepy Mulholland factor Drive. in Mulholland Drive with that story of the guy behind the dumpster that I yep. think is like yep. classic David Lynch where like you know nothing is really going to happen besides a homeless guy popping out at you, but the build up and the way he does it is so deliberate and slow and weird that you're getting like just sort of he builds this anxiety to like a fever pitch mm -hmm. and he takes like mundanely scary things and makes them very scary. And in Twin Peaks, you will see that he does that very well. He takes like something that's shouldn't be that scary, like a Canadian tuxedo <laughs> and makes it terrifying. Um, Absolutely. And I, I love that about him. Yeah. Big Lynch fan. I, I've seen Mulholland drive at least one and a half times. Like I've, I know I've watched it all the way through and I've tried watching it at least one or two times since then. And I, I can never remember anything about it. In my head, it always gets confused with that other movie that came out around that time, um, Hollywood oh, Confidential. Oh, uh, um, with uh, LA, LA Confidential. LA Confidential. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's way different than LA. I know it is. I know, but like, just like the, there's oh, yeah. I visual though. cues that like my yeah. brain is wrapping yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Interestingly, uh, it does take. I do think. Yeah, it I does. I think it takes a few watches to figure out what is going on. Okay. Well, Mulholland Drive... I still Drive, actually don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's all I could... I just know I have no idea what the plot was about right. uh, to this day. No, and you're not I remember some girl gets to. thrown off yeah. of an embankment from a car or something. Yes. That's, like, all I remember. And actually, uh, yeah. David Lynch has said that that was originally thought of as Audrey Goes to Hollywood. Oh, so The character Audrey from Twin Peaks 
is the inspiration for Naomi Watts' character right. in Mulholland Drive. Also, uh, Mulholland Drive was going to be a TV series, and then they <laughs> right. just converted into a Yeah, movie. it's a really uh, good one, too, and it has that lynchy, like, let's just throw in a weird thing, like a cowboy, yeah. or like... You know, he uses visions and yeah. like, fever dreams and stuff and kind of mixes that and you don't know what's real. Which in the pilot of Twin Peaks, we haven't touched at all. You no. know, like we haven't even gone to where the series is going to go, so that's exciting. What should... Never mind, I was going to ask for like some sort of spoilerless spoiler, yeah. but that's not really a thing. Well, I have a question for you, Tom, as yeah. like first sort of new viewer. Like what would you say... Like, what character... I know there's the characters that you are like, okay, James is ridiculous, and this <laughs> character... But like, is there any... Are there any characters that you really feel kind of pulled to, or that you find compelling? Well, yeah, like, I mean, I wasn't kidding when I said... Because uh, like, I'm basically remembering the show as I'm watching it with you guys. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, I saw that happen, I saw that. So I remember liking James and just being drawn to his performance. <laughs> Uh, whatever that actor's name is, who I said looks like the uh, the last alien in Alien I think his Resurrection. Name is yeah, James yeah. actually a hybrid alien. Yeah, yeah, he looks like <laughs> the, the the white alien that uh, his name is James. Sigourney Weaver yeah, gives birth to. I think to. his name is James. The, is it? Well, like, yeah, I like to say because the James. actor couldn't respond oh, to actor. another name, yeah. and so the they were like, let's just make him name James so that he gets it. Like kind of like Homer being like Homer Thompson in yeah, The Simpsons, yeah. like. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Well, I, I think he's there's so many. To you. There's those <laughs> actors who like like Tony Danza is always yeah. a Tony. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's many others. I can't think yeah. of any other examples right now. So you were really drawn to James right away. I am drawn to James. Uh, I love uh, Bobby's hair. I'm really jealous. It That's is the hair I wanted in the hair. '90s. Um, I, yeah, like I'm like I said, I'm just more seeing. I love uh, Agent Cooper's performance. Mm-hmm. Kyle uh, McLaughlin is a you know like tier clear. above everybody. Else. It's clear he that is. he is. He's on his A game. Yeah, yeah he's it's clear really great. that he's the star in this. Like he's the right. Yeah, he has he has the guy. perfect b balance. He like captures the mood of the show in his performance perfectly. Yes. Yeah. Sets the tone for everyone else without yeah. even trying. Oh. And everyone is in their best level when they're with him. I think. Back to uh, the what was that the scene thing? Uh, blowing a scene or what? what oh, gnawing the gnawing the scene. Gnawing the scene. Gnawing gnawing the scene. Yeah, chewing. Harry Sheriff Harry S. Truman will have some. Yeah, but not contenders. in the first one. No, no, no. In but... the pilot, he's like subtle as could be, except okay. for his hair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the sheriff. Is, you're yeah, right. it's a beautiful early mullet. Uh, the not, sheriff will have not really some a full good mullet. scenes. Uh... The sheriff's department in general is a great crew. You got <laughs> yeah. Andy. We'll, we'll get to know what's the woman's name. Dor Lucy. 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 Yeah, Lucy. Lucy has some great scenes. She Lucy's some, my uh... first contender for a segment that I want to do called like Twin Peaks Closet or something to do with <laughs> like their sweaters. But her first sweater is a great sweater. And there's a lot of great sweaters in Twin Peaks, but she's got these, like, argyle shoulder patches that she's wearing over, like, a tan brown with, like, bejeweled <laughs> that I'm like, yep, that's Twin Peaks right there. Yeah. It's, like, the mixed media of... And her voice and... cuts through my from my childhood, like, because my parents watched this show when it was on originally, oh my God. and I didn't. You're like, Andy, Deputy and Brannan? I remember her voice so well. From, that's all I remember of the show. Are you a Simpsons fan, Tom? Big time, yeah. She's Samantha in... Stinky. Millhouse's first girlfriend. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the Wait, not the preacher's daughter. That was Barb's first girlfriend. Yeah, that's Barb's. You won't be needing this anymore. <laughs> that's the preacher's girlfriend. <laughs> no, that was the babysitter. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, the yeah the cool who's with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's with Jimbo Jones. Yes. Yeah. But Samantha Stinky has braces. Yeah, my shirt's chafing. <laughs> yeah. Who believes my shirt's chafing me? Oh, now my pants are chafing me. <laughs> oh. This podcast will will probably sway into Simpsons territory. I think the three of us are yeah. all pretty well, big fans. Yeah. At least the first eleven seasons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other ter yeah other territories X Files and there's yeah, X Files we'll crossover. crossover. All when Melissa gets here. She'll be all about the X Files crossover. There's Seinfeld uh, crossover. There's as a well. lot of crossover. 90s um, TV was pretty much they're like yeah. Vancouver was the place to be if you were filming huh. in the 90s, which is odd, but you know. <laughs> Wait, I still got to place the Simpsons character that she played though. Samantha Stanky. Uh, Milhouse's girlfriend. Give me the story of the episode a little more. Um, 
Like, what's the B story or the A story? Uh, the A story, I guess, is that a new girl comes <laughs> to Bart and Milhouse's class. Oh, now I remember. And, now I remember. Okay, yeah. yeah. And he catches and them kissing Principal in the treehouse. And Principal Skinner says, it's Samantha Stinky. Yes. Okay, that's where I know the voice yeah, from also. Lucy. Yeah. That's You're right. Lucy. Lucy's, Lucy and Andy are an adorable couple <laughs> in Twin Peaks. One challenge we tried to do once was to write down every couple from Twin Peaks. There's like yeah. at least 30. We'll have to go into this for, yeah, there further down so the many line. But, uh, there's only oh, one yeah. couple who doesn't have. There's only one couple that doesn't cheat on each other. No spoilers. That's okay. That's right, That's yeah. Pretty low <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Pretty low It'll spoiler. be tough. That's a challenge for you. <laughs> who is that couple? All right. I'll try yeah. to predict. Let's see. <laughs> So, what else do we have here? Um, oh, you mentioned this, Pat, and this is interesting to me. There's a lot of protecting of James going on in the first episode that is sort of inexplicable. So, James uh, with the bikers. filmed a mm. video of Laura and Donna having a picnic and doing a little <laughs> weird dance together <laughs> oh, in yeah. large yeah. cardigans, as they are wont to do. And... When Donna's interrogated about it, she lies for James, which makes sense because they're like yeah. secretly in love with each other. But when Bobby's interrogated about it, he also lies for James, which sort of makes no sense. I guess because he wants to beat him up himself? Yeah. I don't know. That's huh. when Cooper's like, oh, right. that looks like a hog to me, and he zooms in on her yeah, eye. Yeah, right. No, I know. I know the. But when. I don't remember him telling Bobby about it, but that's when he's like, I'm going to go pound that a yeah. biker. That's how he finds out. Bikers gonna get. I won't do another Bobby impression. Some bikers gonna. (laughs) I keep doing them. Is pounded his face pounded. Because yeah, you don't. Because the Laura Flynn Boyle, what's her character's name? Donna. Donna. She's not attached outwardly to any male character. Like she doesn't have like a boyfriend. Actually, she she does. Yeah, Mike is is her boyfriend. But it's very. Oh, the letter jacket guy. Letter snake. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> snake. snake, yeah. But Mike is snake, not Bobby. Mike is snake. Okay. Yeah, okay. I was. I had trouble with that too. But All right. she's in love with Bobby or with uh, James. With so James. okay, so that explains why she. Because if that hadn't been the case, I would've been like, yeah, yeah. what possible so, like, reason the she? Love she could say he was there with me. Is like Laura and Bobby are dating, and they're like quarterback and prom queen, and like that's like how the world should be. And then Mike and Donna are dating, and that's like how the world should be. But actually. But, Laura's in love is fucking James, but James and Donna want to be together. And, so and like, Bobby is with and Bobby's uh, with um, Shelly. Shelly, yeah. yes, the waitress at the diner. Do you think James and Donna want? And you probably know, but do they think they wanted to be together before, or was it was just sort of brought on by Laura disappearing? It seems like it was probably before a little bit too, but okay. that's debatable. Certainly that's, brought that's on. That's tough. That's a good question. By Laura, that's a they're good like question. the two people, and I yeah. actually do think Laura Flynn Boyle. I go back and forth with how I feel about her, but she does do a good job. I like the scene where she reacts to Laura's death, where like the girl goes screaming, like the whole sequence of that order yeah. of things. Like it's like the teacher gets the news, the girl goes screaming across the lawn. Donna just looks at the empty chair and looks at James and, like, knows. <laughs> and that's actually kind of a good moment for Laura Flynn Boyle, I think. And that's also when I'm like, I like this James guy. Because it's, like, every other everything else about that scene is so realistic and, yeah, like, well and handled. He's and he's just like... Terrible. Uh, he looks like he's a junkie on withdrawal. And <laughs> yeah. it's like... Uh, yeah, what's yeah. that dude, the line where he... What did he say? He was like, I'm sorry about... I changed that, my mind. I'm not sorry. And then they kiss. Yeah, and yeah. then they kiss. And then he yeah. says, "No, I think I changed my mind. I'm not." Either sorry. way, it's <laughs> so douchey. And you're so right. That whole sequence. And we were even talking about how the teacher is very subtle. Yeah, and well like, played. Does a great job. <laughs> yeah. Never seen again. She's got very. We were like, oh, her hair is too normal, and she's too subtle for Twin Peaks. But like. She has very straight, normal hair, and she does a very cool, clear job of, like, <laughs> how you would be as a teacher if this happened. Yeah. And then, you know, you get the girl, which is a great, like, weird, lynchy thing. And then you've got Donna, and actually Lara Flynn Boyle, who can, she can give it a little, she can give the scenery a chew. She, but she but was she pulling was it pulling off. she was pulling it off, and she does the thing where she looks at the chair and kind of, like... You don't know at that point that it's, like, going to be a weird show until... Right. James is, like, your only hint. He's, then he, like, just fucks it up, which is why James is my 
least favorite. I think the high school in general is shot so well. They have this thing where they have like this red line that looks like a pulse that mm. gets painted across oh, everything. It's like that's their, uh, yeah, it's their colors yeah. are this. It's like this red. It looks like when you see in the hospital like the, someone's yeah, yeah. pulse meter going yeah, like it right, goes right, across, right, and right. they just shoot everything very Wasn't weirdly. That- was that same line part of the decoration that's like Native American looking in the <gasps> lodge, or is oh, that just right. my imagination? No, I think you're right. At the Great Northern, yeah, it's the Great Northern, that like similar. I feel like yeah. that's to be. There is a lot of Native American. Um, yes, not to mention themes. I Hawk, guess, so. who yeah. is one of the. Yeah, we don't see too much of Hawk in the in the pilot, but oh, is he the guy with the great hair? He's like really big. Yeah, he's yeah. he's the Native American. He's Native okay, American. I couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't really tell from. He's also a Native American yeah. cop in the X Files mm-hmm. in several other shows. Yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah, like okay. he's got the market cornered on that role. And you know what? He does it beautifully <laughs> and that's great. <laughs> but yeah, you got Andy <laughs> Hawk, great. Sheriff Truman, that guy, Lucy. If it's the guy I'm thinking of, like story. that's the guy they had in mind when they made T Hawk for Street Fighter. Yeah. Probably. If you yeah, know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That was like That's him, yeah. Yeah. He, he's Done. wonderful. And I like how a lot of shows, the trope is kind of like FBI comes in and has conflict with like the small town cops. But in this, they get along perfectly and seamlessly and mm-hmm. they like are best friends. But They just want the help, Harry says. Yeah. We just appreciate the right. help. They're yeah. like so into it and so great with Cooper. But the one Cooper thing that he, that he does that I'm kind of like not sure if it's a great step is the town hall meeting of like the leaders that he like has this town hall meeting to be like basically kind of induce panic about this Laura Palmer situation and be like so we're gonna have a curfew and you know it seems a little bit extreme to me to do that but otherwise Cooper's pretty much a genius so yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) and it's with a it's with the leaders of the towns you get yeah, we meet a lot of, we meet the mayor, who we don't see again for a while. We meet the log lady at the town meeting. Oh my god. Oh yeah, very briefly. The log lady. Very briefly. I just remember that she shows up again and it's sort of like a running joke. But I think, I don't, yeah. but she also has like a more significant part of yeah. the night yeah. in question, but, or something. Don't remind me, but I'll, we'll see. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll find out. I'll you'll find out that. again. So, okay, Tom, to kind of wrap up then, if you had to choose like, who right now is your top suspect? Since you kind of, you don't really know, who is on your I like, don't even, short list? I, I hadn't even started to formulate okay. at all. No, Cause actually the no first, one kind of like stands out more than another. Like honestly, when I was watching the show, the first time I assumed up until like episode four or five where I stopped, that it, you were probably going to find out it was someone from outside of town. But now I know that's oh. not the case. These are the subtle spoilers. Well, it could be. Oh, come on. You can stop. <laughs> I know when something has been spoiled subtly by accident. It's not a big deal. It's part of oh, it. part of life. The uh, subtle spoilers. That's play. all right. I mean, that gives him at least... I mean, yeah, now it's like, okay, yeah. I'll play the game now going you know forward. Him, yeah. You've seen the, the killer, so... That's, yeah, that's not... That's well, cool. even Cooper says in the town hall meeting, like, yeah. it could be someone here in this town, blah, blah, blah. See, yeah, and if that... And if, like... Lynch wanted us playing that guessing game. He should have been like, he should have just had like a sort of a TV moment. Where it's like I know the car- the killer is one of the people in this town. Like, yeah, like had a true. flood that night, so like no one could have gotten in from the outside town or something. Right. Yeah, that is true. Such a better writer than David Lynch. Gosh, Lynch. <laughs> yeah. So no suspects. Um, yeah, I don't. Even, I don't even like playing that game. So I'll just I'll just take the show as it comes. Okay. Because I know like I'm always the the worst at guessing on like Murder She Wrote. <laughs> my dad could always, my dad would nail it every time at like the half hour mark. Who the, like we used to watch it as a family, and wow. like literally every single time he called it, and uh, <laughs> I never could. I'm I'm really a sucker and for that's red herrings. Yeah. Yeah, and there are a lot of those. So, yeah. Pat, who's that's... your number one then suspect? <laughs> pilot, just the pilot. Erase your uh, knowledge. I guess maybe maybe like Jacoby was a good good. Dr. Nathan Jacoby. I'm not even sure if his first name is Nathan, but I love I'm pretty it. sure that's what he's... Cause it's, it's a very musical-sounding name, and I, 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 like, remembered it. I tried to make a note of remembering it. We'll have to double-check that one. Dr. Okay. Nathan Jacoby. 
therapist guess, in Twin Peaks. <laughs> I guess James and Bobby are also... James, Bobby, and Jacoby. That's who they maybe want you to think. Okay. I'm going to go with Jacoby and Benjamin Horn. Okay. It's, it's, it feels like the, the the feeling of like you guys fake predicting who you. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay, okay. My goal for next week is to uh, to to add a new suspect to the list if I can, <laughs> and also to I like you know it is really true. I overly love this show, and I will admit it. But you really do get something new every new viewing, and I'm seeing more and more how they really do paint the town as like something strange and different is going on like the town is such a big part so i'm i'm, I'm excited yeah. to see where that goes agreed yes <laughs> and i'm looking forward to falling hope i mean yeah it looks like a show i could fall in love with if i gave it a proper like season through so i'm gonna see we'll get tom to episode we'll get, six we'll see all right all right I'm gonna hit the old stop button yep boop